What's up you guys, Renee here from Triple O Reptile. Today we're gonna to talk about the nutritional value of feeder insects that you can find here at Triple O Reptile or any of your local pet stores to make feeding your reptile just that much easier. So without further ado, let's go. When looking for a feeder insect to feed your reptile, there's five things you wanna look for. Protein, fat, fiber, ash, and moisture. But what do all of these mean? Well, let's figure that out. So protein is going to be very important for your reptile because it has quite a few functions. It's going to help develop muscle. It's going to help maintain muscle. It's also going to help the organs function properly. It's also going to give your animal a good amount of energy. And there are some feeders that have much higher protein than others, which are going to help a sick animal get that energy that they need. Fats for your reptiles are extremely important. They offer energy, they also aid in the absorption of vitamin A and vitamin E, and they also help cushion the internal organs of your reptiles. However, offering too many insects that are high in fat can lead to obesity in your reptiles, so you wanna make sure you find a happy middle when offering certain feeder insects. Now, there are gonna be certain times of the year when you do wanna offer more fatty insects, to your reptile, whether it's breeding season, if you are planning on breeding, because there's a lot of energy that goes into the development of the eggs or live young. Or if you're planning on brumating your reptile or if your reptile naturally wants to brumate, you wanna make sure you offer them fattier insects to get them ready for that time. Now, fiber is extremely important for your reptile. It aids in the digestive process and it also helps when they're going to the bathroom. Now, fiber comes in the form of chitin and chitin is basically the exoskeleton of your feeder insects. Now, most carnivores and insectivores are gonna have specialized enzymes in their stomach that are gonna help them break down that chitin. However, if you are to overfeed too much cayenne or too many feeder insects that have high fiber, those enzymes might not have enough time to break that down and you can run into some issues with impaction. So you wanna make sure that you have a very well-rounded diet of feeders that are gonna be high in fiber and also low in fiber. Now the moisture content of a feeder insect is basically the water content. This is what keeps your reptile hydrated when they're feeding. This is also how reptiles that live in deserts survive when there's no bodies of water around. They're eating insects out there that have moisture content, which is keeping them hydrated. And that is how they survive in those harsh conditions. The ash content of a feeder insect is basically the leftovers. It doesn't include fiber. It doesn't include protein, fat, or moisture. It includes the leftovers. That means vitamins, minerals, and the gut content of your insects. This is why gut loading is extremely important because that way you can now raise the ash level for your feeder insects when you're feeding your reptiles. Ugh. All right, so first we're gonna start with the earthworm. Check this guy out. Oh man, he is funky looking. Now, an earthworm is gonna have a protein content of 10%, a fat content of 2%, and a moisture content of 84%. That means these guys are extremely high in water, which is pretty crazy. Now, unfortunately, there's not enough information on their fiber content or their ash content, but with how squishy they are and lack of exoskeleton and the fact that they just live in dirt and tend to eat soil, it's safe to say the fiber and ash levels are gonna be pretty low. Now, some reptiles that are gonna love these are gonna be box turtles, especially the babies. You can chop these up and they'll wreck them. Um, aquatic turtles and Pac-Man frogs, they really do love these. Now, keep in mind, other reptiles will eat these, but you want to make sure you don't do this too much because these guys can have a bit of a laxative effect. And though they have a much higher moisture content, a laxative effect will dehydrate your reptile. So you want to be careful with that. Next up is the Dubia Roach. So check these guys out. You got your little one right here and your large one right here. Now, Dubia Roaches are an extremely popular feeder in the hobby for a few reasons. They're easy to breed and they can't climb a smooth surface. And believe it or not, these guys have 30% protein, 5% fat, 4% fiber, 2% ash, and 63% moisture. So these guys got a lot going on with them. And like I said before, they can't climb a smooth surface. So if you put them in a little bowl that's completely smooth, they can't climb out of it. It means you also don't have to worry about them accidentally escaping out of your tanks. So next up we have crickets. So that's what a cricket looks like right there. I forgot to bring crickets. I literally brought every feeder, forgot to bring crickets. So you guys gotta deal with my artistic abilities. Now, crickets are going to contain 18% protein, 7% fat, 2% fiber, 2% ash, and 69% moisture. Now, crickets are extremely important, especially for baby reptiles. However, they only get to small, medium, and large, and their larges are only so big. Most reptiles, as they get older, aren't going to really want to mess with crickets anymore, and they're going to want food that's bigger, moves more, and it's just more enticing. So you can't rely on crickets forever, and you want to make sure to offer a different variety of insects. So next up, we have the mealworm. So check this little guy out. Now, though this guy's small, believe it or not, he packs a lot of nutrients. This little guy right here has 18% protein, 9% fat, 2% fiber, 2% ash, and 66% moisture. This guy is pretty well-rounded. 
But do keep in mind, these guys do have a decent amount of exoskeleton as well. And you want to make sure that your animal is chewing these before they swallow them. Sometimes a bearded dragon can get too many in their mouth and swallow one whole and you don't want that. So always remember to offer a variety of insects. Now another cool thing about these guys is you can keep these in the fridge for about a month to a month and a half and they go into a dormant state and will stay alive the entire time. So pretty good shelf life. So next up is a goliath worm. So now a goliath worm will start off at about this size, which is kind of tiny, but they can get all the way to this big. Now that is a pretty good size bug. Now these guys are going to have a protein content of 10%, a fat content of 10%, a fiber content of 3%, an ash content of 2%, and a moisture content of 85%. That means these guys are full of water. So if you have a bearded dragon that is just not eating its greens and very picky with its feeders, this is going to be a lifesaver because these guys right here are going to keep your bearded dragon hydrated and healthy. Now next up we have the calcium worm, also known as black soldier fly larvae. So check this thing out. Now, believe it or not, this little guy packs a punch with nutrients. This guy has 17% protein, 11% fat, 8% fiber, 6% ash, and 64% moisture. This is a very well-rounded feeder for its size. Now, the only thing about them is they don't move too much, so it does take a lot of them to kind of grab your reptile's attention. But if you have a reptile that loves these, then you're pretty lucky. These guys are great for them. Next up, we have the super worm. Now, a soup worm is going to be a pretty well-rounded feeder. These guys are going to have a protein content of 17%, a fat content of 16%, a fiber content of 7%, an ash content of 2%, and a moisture content of 61%. Now, that's a pretty well-rounded feeder. However, do keep in mind it is still pretty high in fat, and it does have a lot of exoskeletons. So that's something that you want to keep in mind when feeding these. This isn't supposed to be a regular basis feeder or even a daily feeder you still want to make sure that you mix it up because of the fat content and the exoskeleton you don't want to run into obesity or impaction with your reptile now next we have the madagascar hissing cockroach check out this beauty she is huge now to match with their size these guys are packed with nutrients you're looking at 64 percent protein 20 percent fat 26% fiber, 8% ash, and 69% moisture. These guys have it all. Now keep in mind, this is basically the burger of feeder insects. These guys are gonna be more of a snack and you don't wanna feed these very often because they are very high in a lot of the nutritional value and can be a little too much for reptiles. So you wanna make sure you aren't feeding these all the time and give them to them more as a snack. Next up we have the waxworm, which is one of my personal favorite feeders. Check this out, bang, little guy, right? But this little guy right here packs a punch. This guy has 14% protein, 22% fat, 1% fiber, 1% ash, and 61% moisture. All of that just in this little guy. These guys play a very important role in this hobby. If you have an animal that might have lost its tail or they're being lethargic, they might be getting skinny due to brumation. These guys right here pack a punch. With all that fat, it will help your animal bounce back to their former self and these guys help give a lot of energy to reptiles that are lethargic. If your reptile lost its tail, well, they don't have that fat storage anymore, but you can feed them fattier foods to kind of help them regain their strength. And there you guys have it. That is a nutritional breakdown of feeder insects. Now keep in mind that there's research being done on feeders every single day and these numbers will vary. Don't forget to gut load your feeders because it's extremely important and it helps make sure that your reptile gets the most out of every meal. And always offer a good variety of feeders. You don't want to just offer one, you want to make sure that your reptile has a great variety because every single insect offers something new to the table. I hope you guys like this video. Leave a comment down below, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification so you never miss a video that we put out. I'll see you guys next time. Whoop.